What's going on YouTube? Geosnow right here. So in today's video we have some important info about the jailbreaking itself and the additional processes like bypassing the 7 day signing process and of course the semi restore which gets you back to the stock iOS version after jailbreaking it. So um, we're going to discuss at first about the bypassing of the 7 day signing procedure. So you probably know that when you are trying to sideload an application through the CDA impactor being that a jailbreak application or Kodi or I don't know GBA for iOS or a game or whatever you will need to pretty much do that every seven days because it gets signed by Apple only for a week so normally on a jailbroken device that doesn't really change you will still have to uh, resign your applications that you install from CD Impactor. Now there is now a way uh, that is integrated pretty much in the Liber iOS jailbreak and the Liber TV created by Jonathan Levin that you can use in order to pretty much patch this and skip the signing every seven days for all the applications that you install after jailbreaking. So in order to get things clear, you cannot do this for the jailbreak application itself because the jailbreak application itself runs even after restart and this means that there are no patches in place. So you can't do this to the jailbreak app itself. But you can do this to the other applications you installed after jailbreaking. For example, Kodi and GBA for iOS and games and stuff like that. So I know that there are already methods in order to do this, for example, AppSync, but applications like AppSync tend to be quite dangerous on beta jailbreaks. For example, they can even create boot loops in times um, and um, they are very hard to use sometimes. This method created by uh, Jonathan Levin uses only the J tool application which has been created by him and is present in the Liber iOS and Liber TV binary packs. This means that you don't need any additional tweaks or anything else but a simple terminal connection to the device in order to patch your applications to no longer require the 7 days uh, certificate. So um, this is pretty much how you do it. This link to his forum in here will describe the process. You have to run this tool in here, JTool, with this parameters for the application in order to uh, bypass the 7 day signature. He does this with the Kodi in here. So if you're interested, you can do that and it's pretty useful. I'm going to start talking now about the factory on Jailbreaker Beta 3. Now this has been released here on Twitter by Profit and it has been quickly posted on the uh, Reddit. But there's still a problem with it. Now this seems to be an application for on jailbreaking to remove a jailbreak. For example, to remove the Topanga jailbreak from your device, to remove the Electra jailbreak from your device and so on. The problem with it is that it has tons of bugs and Saigusa, the developer behind the Phoenix jailbreak, actually recommends against this tool because it seems to have a quite bad implementation. Uh, it pretty much uh, removes files that are required. It doesn't check whether a process requires a file that's going to be removed. It doesn't close the processes be before removing them or before removing their files. And um, it pretty much attempts to uh, remove binaries and then use them. For example, RM in here, Saigusa gives an example, RMF, and it will pretty much remove the RM binary, but then RM is called again for another file, which is impossible because you already removed the RM binary. So, um. It is pretty much a bash script and has a hard-coded list of files to be removed, which is pretty much bad. So if you're coming across this on jailbreaker and you're trying to use it in order to like, I don't know, get rid of Topanga or get rid of any other jailbreak, do not use it for the moment since it might create more problems than you have currently with your jailbreak. So yeah, it's definitely a bad idea. I'm going to link this um, post in here from Saigusa that will describe more uh, of the problems that are present with the tool. So um, if you're interested in checking them out, go ahead, but do not use this tool for the moment. The idea itself is very good, but the implementation of the tool is not that good yet. I'm going to talk now about the Semi Restore, which is an actual tool that actually works, created by Coolstar, in order to get you back to the stock iOS. For those of you who do not know, you can use Semi Restore in order to pretty much restore your device to a clean uh, version, to a stock version without jailbreak things and stuff like that. And Semi Restore works very well. But according to Coolstar, he will not support in Semi Restore devices that have used Tildict Electra and not because he's a bad person or stuff like that, don't get him wrong, but because he says in here, quote, 
Since some people are wondering why SemiRestore won't support leaked Electra RCs, I'm looking into utilizing the APFS or Apple File System snapshots, which obviously require uh, taking the snapshot when the file system is on a stock state. End quote. So, uh, if you've used the uh, leaked Electra, you will not be able to use the Semi Restore in order to get to a clean version and to use the normal one after release. But there might still be a solution for you. Coolstar also said in here, quote, just restored my daily driver iPhone 6s from iOS 10.2 to iOS 11.1.2 using the 11.2.6 blobs using Future Restore. Now, a little bit of clarification in here, uh, he says blobs in here, he actually wanted to say SEP and basement because he actually followed it up, mistyped, I meant iOS 11.2 blobs using the 11.2.6 SEP and basement. He also says in here, quote, if you have the blobs and you would like to either get to iOS 11.1.2, you know, from a lower firmware, or would just like a fresh start on iOS 11.1.2, this is a good time to do it. So, what this means for you? Well, if you're running an older version like iOS 10.2, 10.1.1, 10.2.1, 10.3.3 and so on, but you have your iOS 11.1.2 blobs saved, you can actually use those and the SEP and basement components from the iOS 11.2.6 into the future restore and you will be able to get to iOS 11.1.2. No problem. So uh, this is a very good thing since the SEP and the basement are not always compatible uh, with all the versions. These two, the latest version and the iOS 11.1.2 are compatible, which means that you are able to restore. Now, if you have used the um, Electra leaked and you want to pretty much get rid of it on your device and start over in order to be able to install the uh, normal Electra, you will have to perform this. Now, spoiler alert, this is not a very simple procedure. There are tutorials online that can help you, but there are still a lot of things that can go wrong. So you're doing this at your own risk. Now, the future restore process requires you to have the iOS 11.1.2 IPSW and iOS 11.2.6, since you will have to create sort of like a custom made farmer, but it's not that, but it's akin to that. So um, you will have to combine the um, basement and the SEP of the iOS 11.2.6 and the the rest of the components like the file system, the uh, RAM disk and the kernel and so on of the iOS 11.1.2. It is a fiddly procedure but since the, um, the components are compatible if you do have the blobs you will be able to restore to iOS 11.1.2 which by the way is currently not signed so normally you wouldn't be able to restore to it. Now if you do not have your blobs do not try this method do not start doing this because you will fail. You need to have the blobs for the iOS 11.1.2 saved. So yeah, that's pretty much it uh, guys. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to stay updated. We'll keep you updated with anything that's going on in the Chilbury community. I'm Geosnow. Until the next time, peace out.